Howdy y'all, this is Lost Man here, and it's uh, Sunday night, so I'm going to do yet another of my Lazy Sunday Roundups. Now this week was uh, an interesting week. I had uh, some fun, some fun, <laughs> some fun uh, weather occurrences happen. We had some storms come into San Antonio uh, this past Thursday that essentially reminded us that... Um, yeah, Mother Nature can be a very, very dangerous thing. You know, uh, it wasn't um, too much damage in my neighborhood, but there were a lot of trees that were uprooted and there was debris everywhere. It was crazy. I mean, it uh, in the course of like ten or fifteen minutes, we saw a lot, of, a lot of, a lot of damage being done. And uh, that being said, that was kind of odd because uh, I was in Dallas this weekend and uh, they got the same kind of storms today. So I'm wondering if things are following me. But let's get to uh, the meat of why we're here. Okay, so today I'm going to be discussing some of the movies I watched this past week. It's part of my Los Man 300 challenge. Now, if you're new to this uh, YouTube channel, uh, the Los Man 300 is a uh, challenge that I did for myself where I'm trying to watch 300 movies that, that I've never seen before. Now, the movies I'm restricting to horror movies, science fiction movies, cult classics... Uh, generally the genres that I prefer. I mean, occasionally I might throw in a superhero movie, you know, just for, you know, you know, or a comic book movie for fun. But the idea is I want to uh, watch movies that are that have been sitting on my um, watch list for quite some time, you know, and, uh, you know, get around to, like, you know, because, you know, we all get into kind of a rut where we basically just watch the same thing over and over again, you know. Oh, yeah. Oh. Game of Thrones, you know. And, uh... ooh, my force. <laughs> and, oh, look at that. Maybe a future movie I'll be discussing. Who knows? We'll see. <laughs> okay. All right. The first movie that I uh, checked out was a um, it was a foreign movie. It's called The Eyes of My Mother. Now this movie was directed by uh, Nicholas Pesci uh, or Pesh. I, I and uh, it was an interesting story. It was one that I had seen on my um, watch or added to my watch list a while back. It concerns the story of a young girl who is. Uh, witnesses a very violent event in her young life i mean basically she witnesses the murder of one of her uh, parents and how she responds to it is basically what the story is she let's just say it really really messes with her and um the story is a very complicated story it deals with isolation it deals with a um kind of like that idea of uh you know revenge or crime versus punishment or you know, you know, basically, you know, justice versus revenge. So it's it's a it's a great story. I mean, it's really dark and and kind of disturbing. It's one of those movies that when you're done, you're like, oh my, you know, I'll give you that look, you know, that that feeling of holy crap, what did I just watch? So yes, that's the eyes of my mother. Now the uh, next movie that I watched was a it wasn't really a horror movie. It was a movie uh, that I had on my watch list that I watched um, a while back. It was called Pretty Persuasion. It's not really a horror movie. It's more of a uh, thriller and um, not even really a horror thing. It's just basically kind of like a... Uh, it, it's it's an interesting story. It has Rachel Evan Wood in it. Uh, and she basically plays a young teen girl going to a private school who uh, decides that she wants... Oh, of course, she wants to be famous. Like, like a lot of young girls, she wants to seek fame. And this one is willing to do whatever it takes to seek fame, even if it means stepping on people and uh, uh, literally um, making herself the center of attention at the expense of others. Now, the, the, the movie itself was is over 10 years old, and it's got a pretty good cast. It had uh, Ron Livingston in it and uh, Jane Krakowski and, uh, and, strangely enough, James Woods. It's funny, her uh, father plays this racist uh, individual, and I'm like, wow. James Wood playing a racist individual? <gasps> Is that even possible? Okay, we won't bring we'll bring politics up in this podcast. That's I, mean, I can do a whole other podcast on that. But I'm gonna stick to I'm gonna stick to horror and genre and cult movies because that's what that's why I'm here. All right, so Pretty Persuasion wasn't too bad. It was very kind of twisty and uh, it had some. Um, it's one of those movies where you look and you're like, you know, oh my, because there are very much you know stories like this out there. You know, young young kids willing to use social media. Uh, to, to, well, and well, not, not so much social media in this one, but today, yeah. They're willing to do whatever it takes to get famous, you know, even if it means hurting others along the way. All right, so after that, um, 
I decided to go back into some horror, and um, when I was searching through the movies, I found one that was, strangely enough, was a movie that had, uh, well, it was kind of, <laughs> I found a movie called Aftermath. Now, after, literally after, <laughs> it took me a while to find it because there are a couple of movies called Aftermath, and uh, apparently one of them stars Arnold Schwarzenegger, but this is not it. Aftermath is a movie that was uh, made... Let's take a look. All right, well, while I'm searching. Uh, Aftermath is a post-apocalyptic post story. It um, concerns a... It's oh, First off, it's directed by Peter Engert, and it came out in 2012. And it concerns a group of people who meet up... And, in the midst of a uh, nuclear attack. Basically, the movie starts off with um, random events that occur that uh, are the um, f basically lead to the destruction of society. And in the story, you show a small group of survivors in, uh, in, a, in a remote part of Texas, you know, basically taking shelter and uh, trying to wait it out. It is a very dark story. It is very depressing. It is very bleak. As with uh, most apocalyptic stories, this is not a story that's meant to have a happy ending. It is really, really terrifying. I mean, if uh, one of the things about post-apocalyptic stories is that uh, they're not supposed to be happy stories. You know, some of the uh, best ones I've seen, you know, The, the Day After, Threads, um, The Mist. Well, not so much The Mist, but um, The Road. That's the one I was thinking of. And... Um, in, in all those movies, I mean, you just have society basically collapsing as a result of war or famine or some sort of disaster and uh, and people people trying to survive. And, you know, in, in these circumstances, you know, it's hard to find people to trust because, you know, like, like when you're watching uh, The Walking Dead, you don't know who to trust. I mean, the people who used to be your friends may you know are, are now rivals or they may very well become the end, you know, your, your, you know, and your the ones trying to take you out, you know, because of the, the quest to survive and, you know, to seek out shelter and, you know, supplies, you know, whatever it needs to survive. So, yeah, uh, Aftermath was a very uh, dark, very bleak movie, and it's um not the movie you want to watch if you want to sit down for a good time. It was strange because I watched it right after I watched a couple episodes of Chernobyl. So, yeah, it was kind of an interesting thing watching different types of movies dealing with issues like um, like radiation exposure and um, you know strangely enough both of them had Geiger counters and uh, they both talked about the effects of uh, radiation how dangerous it is you know because that's basically what's gonna take you out you know the fallout the dust in the air you know I mean being being underground is not a problem it's just that you know you're gonna be dealing with the aftermath of you know the radiation the the nuclear winter that's bound to follow and the lack of medical supplies you know so even something as simple as like pneumonia or typhus can uh, take you out. If you don't have the proper supplies to uh, get you going, all right. Now, after I, after I did um, you know, after I watched Aftermath, I watched a um, a movie. It was a made for TV movie, and it was called The Haunted. Now, this was a movie from the early '90s, and it was an interesting story. It is a haunted house movie about a family who move into a house and you know they have like two children and they end up having two more children along the way and over the course of the years strange events start to occur in their home you know like weird bizarre things um uh strange you know occurrences items disappear and you know they hear noises and um and of course some of the ghosts are rather uh rapey somewhat you know you know but now this was t a tv movie so of course not too graphic but yeah uh, what was unique about this movie was that it was one of the first appearances of the characters of Ed and Lorraine Warren. Uh, this was one of their stories that they um, that they dealt with, and it's interesting because when you watch, you know, the movies with The Conjuring, you know, you have the um, Ed and Lorraine Warren as characters. Well, this is the one of their earlier stories, you know, because they actually had a couple of cases that have been, you know, that have been made in the movies. And strange enough, you have another a Conjuring movie coming out. Um, I think later this year, possibly next year. So um, that's interesting. I mean, I'm, you know, I've kind of stated before that I'm not a big believer in a lot of what they do, but I do like the stories. I mean, The Conjuring franchise is one of the best recent horror movie franchises, and um, and I know they did the investigation of the Amityville Horror, which is also one of my favorite movies. So this was a, this was a good story. It was, um, like I said, it was a made-for-TV movie. Um, not as well-known as some of the other more recent movies you know, involving Ed and Lorraine Warren, but it's definitely worth checking out. You know, it's, like I said, it's a... Um, 
it's it's a pretty creepy story and uh, this supposedly was based on a true story so you know what maybe those sorts of things are important because you know when you're watching a horror movie you know knowing that this could be real could add to the um you know to to the scare factor there all right so um now another movie that i did check out and this is one i um had heard about this is the uh, the perfection now i have already posted a video uh with my reaction and a little review of the perfection so i'm just gonna give you a brief rundown again uh basically the movie stars allison williams as um a young woman who is a cellist prodigy and she has to quit to look after her mother and then as a result she basically um years after when her mother passes away she then discovers that another uh, prodigy who is played by logan browning has basically taken her glory and uh, of course she didn't like that now i already described the movie to some extent and did a little reveal too um, you know not, not too much though i mean there's there's some big spoilers in this movie that you want to check out so i'm just gonna go ahead and leave it at that and say and really recommend it i mean it was a great movie i mean really terrifying and as a fan of allison williams you know i definitely enjoy seeing her in, in movies like this because you know she's turning out to be a great horror movie actress and i really look forward to any other projects that she does all right so uh the next batch of movies I watched um, on a, a little trip I took uh, to Dallas this weekend, as I mentioned, uh, the first one was a um, movie on uh, Netflix. It was called um, Boar. Now, uh, Boar is a movie that came out a couple of years ago from Australia. It is directed by Chris Sun, and uh, it is a movie about a family that goes out into the remote parts of Australia. Um, you got you know, you got a husband and wife, and you got the kids and um, the daughter's um, boyfriend, and they're visiting relatives. Uh, basically, her, um, the wife's brother lives out there, and uh, it's funny because the, um, the actors that were in it that I recognized, uh, Bill Mosley, uh, who is known to many horror movie fans as Chop Top from uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2, and uh, he seems to be the, 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 the horror king because he's in a lot of horror movies. Good guy. I hope to meet him someday. Uh, Bill Mosley plays the husband, uh, he's and the stepfather to the kids, and um, another actor who's in there that kind of impressed me was. Um, give me a second here. Um, da, 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 da. I can't even see it right here. But um, well, yeah, I, okay, I shouldn't be doing this though. <laughs> All right, basically the other actor that's in there is the actor who played Rictus in um, Mad Max. So it's pretty good to see him in another role. I mean, the guy's huge, like seven feet tall and ginormous now uh the movie boar itself boar itself. <laughs> all right boar b-o-a-r feral pigs wild pigs mean ugly pigs yeah now the movie itself you know they're out in the middle of nowhere um out in the country just enjoying and what's happening is a number of the local ranchers are uh, reporting problems with uh you know, like animals being killed and their fences being torn up, which is a common occurrence, you know, I mean, you know, because wild pigs are, you know, tend to be a, a, a genuine problem. I mean, they're a nuisance. Uh, here in the state of Texas, it's legal to hunt and kill as many as you want because they are considered an invasive species. Uh, makes for good eating, though, <laughs> I'll tell you that. The, um, the, the creature in boar is uh, pretty terrifying. I mean, we're, this, this thing is like, uh, it's, it's huge. It's not the size of a dog it is much bigger. I mean, it literally is bigger than a cow, probably closer to the size of a, a rhinoceros. So, yeah, this is a this was a fun uh, little uh, creature feature. Uh, you know, kind of like Jaws. Uh, I mean, not to say it's as good as Jaws, obviously, but you know, it's one of those where you know people are out in the middle of nowhere. They don't have any access to weapons, or the weapons aren't really that great, and they're stranded, and they have to deal with this creature that's basically. Uh, deadly and uh very um terrifying so if you want to check out boar it's on netflix right now and it's definitely worth checking out i i, I enjoyed it it's not a four-star movie but you know what hey sometimes it's fun just to watch a uh, creepy cool movie just for the sake of it you know because it, it was you know it was kind of like you know like i said it's like watching jaws you know it's like oh shit look at that thing it's it's, it's ginormous now um the other two movies i checked out this weekend were uh classic films i decided to uh you know, watch a couple of giallos over the weekend, and um, I went back to some of the roots of one of the great horror movie directors. That would be Italian director Dario Argento. Now, Dario Argento has directed quite a number of movies, and he's considered to be one of the kings of horror. 
so I checked out some of his earlier movies. Um, now, the first one I watched was a movie called Deep Red, which is a movie that came out in the mid-70s. Deep Red is a is probably considered one of the great, you know, one of the great, you know, Italian horror movies ever made. Um, its Italian title is Profondo Rosso, and uh, it concerns a, a concert pianist who witnesses a murder. And in the course of um, the the movie, he's trying to uh, help the police to find out who was responsible because, well, the killer's coming after him too, you know, because, you know, apparently when you uh, witness a crime, you tend to draw the attention of the bad guy. Now, a um, standard giallo film, you know, has the usual um, bits and pieces in it. You know, you have the killer with the black gloves, you have the shiny knife that's basically, you know, shown glistening, you have the mysterious costume it's usually like a like a like an overcoat and a hat to conceal the identity and uh, i mean it's pretty straightforward i mean most giallo movies are somewhat predictable uh but they're still worth watching because even though you kind of know what to expect you know you're going to get a different outcome you know you don't know who the killer is and, you know it could be someone that the person knows could be someone that they encountered and uh, what makes um deep red impressive is that it's such a well-made movie the music, the sound, you know, the soundtrack is, it just adds greatly to the, to the tension and, and really gets you excited. You know, you, the, uh, the use of the color, the blood, the, the, the beautiful scenery. I mean, his, our, the, the movies of Dario Argento are not mere horror movies. I mean, they're almost like works of art. You know, when you watch an Argento movie, you're seeing, you know, the, the direction, you're seeing the, you know, the cinematography, sound not that good with film terms, but I mean, just the visual and and the and and the and, and the audio everything about the about the film's an experience you know you know when you watch a movie like Suspiria you're just it's like an adventure you're sitting down and it's like you're reading this great book you know it just with all this adding to the story and Deep Red is one of the best i mean it is a great movie i i watched it on Shutter and it's definitely a movie you want to seek out if you're a fan of horror movies or Italian giallos or or a fan of um, Dario Argento Definitely check it out. It's one of his best movies, and it's definitely one you want to you want to check out. Now, the uh, last movie I checked out was one of the first movies by Dario Argento. It's um, the Bird with the Crystal Plumage or Plumage, something like that. You know. Now, this was his first um, movie or his first motion picture. It is a giallo, so uh, this was you know similar to Deep Red in that respect. This movie concerns a um, a a young man who is in Italy, and he's about to uh, go home. And of course, he witnesses a murder. Well, he witnesses he witnesses a murder attempt. He, um, I guess, there was a young woman who was being attacked by a masked or, or by a you know black coated you know figure, and uh, he is able to stop the murder from occurring. I mean, the woman's hurt really bad. But uh, he, you know, he, he kind of rescues her. And as a result, he, be he becomes kind of like a minor, a minor hero, you know, because of his bravery. However, he then discovers that, one, he can't leave because the Italian police, you know, want, want, want to question him. You know, they take his passport. They tell him he can't go anywhere. And, of course, his uh, girlfriend's getting agitated because I think they were supposed to leave to go back to the United States. So uh, in the course of the um, the events, he's trying to figure out who the killer is, you know, because he wants to get this case over with so he can go home. And at the same time, he knows that he's being chased by the killer. So uh, this movie, like a lot of giallos, you know, uses the usual tropes. You know, you have the, the killer wearing the... Um, the coat and the and the disguise. You have the black gloves. I mean, I mean, it's it just goes without saying. Giallo's black gloves are just the thing. I mean, if I it, it, it I don't know what it is. It's just I guess when you're making a movie, you know, like this, the black gloves and the and the knife, you know, especially from the perspective of the killer, is basically what makes these movies stand out. So um, yeah, this was a great movie. And you know, like I said, it's. Dario Gento's first movie, and it came out the year before I was born, so that movie's almost 50 years old. You know, ooh, get my dad old. Yes, I got that old. And uh, so, yeah, I mean, it's definitely worth checking out. I uh, it's, it's also on Shudder, just like uh, Deep Red is. And um, it's not, um, I think the, the version I saw was in English, so, you know, it, you don't have to worry about subtitles, although it, it helps to pay attention because sometimes they do say things in Italian and then... Uh, 
you definitely you know might get lost in the in the discussion. Now uh, that pretty much covers the the movies that I watched as part of the three hundred uh, challenge. The um, other thing I was going to show you was um, as I'm going through my stuff, I found one of my great artifacts here or in my collection. This is uh, my uh, box collection of the Wicker Man in a uh, pine box. I got this a couple of years ago, and it includes the movie. You know, basically, it's got the movie right here, and it's got like a little, um, you know, like a little theater card, like you would, like you would see in the movie. You know, it's pretty neat. You know, and uh, right here, poster. Yeah, if um. If you've never seen The Wicker Man, be 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 very pay pay close attention to which version you're uh, going to watch. Uh, this particular version is the one with Edward Woodward from the early 1970s, and um, I mean it's a great movie. It's a um, bit a bit of a pagan story, you know. But uh, uh, there's a lot of um, confusion with this movie because there was another there was a remake with uh, Nicolas Cage that came out uh, in the past ten years, and uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that movie is entertaining, but not for the reasons you would expect. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So if you're going to watch The Wicker Man, please um, make sure you know which one you're watching. You want to find yourself watching Nicolas Cage, you know, going, ah, you know. But um, so that pretty much um, wraps this up for this week. Um, so I'm going to put together another group of movies to watch over the next uh, few days. Oh, and uh, I've got another video coming out. Um, I released the first video last week of my YouTube channel that, that of the edited movies that I'm going to be putting together, and that movie was for Phoenix Forgotten. So if you haven't checked it out, go ahead and check it out. Uh, my brother Rob, who's a television editor, did a really good job of putting it together uh, based on the, um, in, you know, the video that I did. So he's uh, currently working on the next one right now. And... Um, so that'll come out in a couple of days, and we'll get those going probably, like I said, every week, every other week, because I want to, um, you know, get, get I want to be able to discuss the movies more in depth, uh, other than the two or three minutes that I might, you know, use for the um, this particular video series, which is still gonna be doing. I'm still gonna be doing this every week, uh, impromptu, no cuts, just turn the turn the camera on and just speak into it. So it's gonna have flubs, blusters, me going up, uh, 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 you know, a lot. So, you know, that's the whole point of this is just about, just me having fun. Um so uh, if you wanna um check me out on my social medias, my Twitter, Losman94, and uh if you want to um check everything else out, go to my homepage at lowsman.com. From there you can check out my letterbox page. You can check out my old website, which is pretty fun to read. And I'm going to put a link to my YouTube page, so if you need to see where those are at, you know, go to losman.com and I'll put some links out there so you can access everything. Um, until then, excuse me, um, I'll go ahead and close out. Um, make sure you hit the subscribe button on here so you can check out my uh, my videos as I put them out. And uh, any other things I did, like last week when I did the, um, the, the, the little video review for The Perfection Occasionally, I'll throw out another bonus little video like that. Whenever there's something cool and interesting that comes out, usually like a like a big movie or, or something really worth checking out. All right, so y'all take care, and uh, that's a lowdown with Lowe's, man.